you probably see elderly drivers are the ones that are stopping at the roundabout and not knowing when to join. I don't think they'd be safe at all. Yeah, I agree. People just like run right through them. They don't really stop or I think they're more dangerous. Uh, I don't even know if a semi-truck could make it around that corner. Modern roundabouts are a newer form of traffic control in Minnesota. They are becoming increasingly popular due to their safety, efficiency, and economic benefits. However, there are many misconceptions and misunderstandings that people hear about roundabouts. In this video, we will address 10 common roundabout myths and in doing so, we'll demonstrate why roundabouts are a viable alternative for intersection traffic control. Myth number one, modern roundabouts are the same thing as traffic circles. I guess I found roundabouts and traffic circles were the same thing. Traffic circles still exist in many places, but they are not the same thing as modern roundabouts. A traffic circle is a one-way road that goes around a center island and when you pull up to it you make a right turn into the circle and a right turn out of the circle. And what that winds up meaning is if you're going to make a right turn to exit the intersection you have to be in the outside lane. And that's not true at a roundabout. A roundabout does not have a circle road, it's just circular islands separating the turns. With traffic circles, the vehicles already in the circle usually have to yield to vehicles that are entering the circle. This can lock up the entire intersection. With roundabouts, the vehicles already in the roundabout have the right-of-way, and entering vehicles have to yield and wait until there is a gap in the traffic flow. This ensures that the roundabout keeps working, even when traffic volumes are heavy. Myth number two, you don't have to stop when entering a modern roundabout. I don't think they'd be safe at all. Yeah, I agree. People just like run right through them. They don't really stop or I think they're more dangerous. It is important to make a distinction between yielding and merging. A yield sign means you cannot proceed past the sign until there is a safe gap in cross traffic, whereas merging means to squeeze into traffic without stopping, as you would when entering a freeway. The proper way to drive a roundabout is as you're approaching the roundabout in one of the legs, first you have to look for pedestrians. And if you don't see any pedestrians, you can continue. If not, you yield to the pedestrians. And then as you approach the yield line, you're approaching the entrance of the roundabout, you're slowing down, you're looking for a gap. If you have a gap, go. If not, stop, because that's what the yield line is telling you to do. Myth number three. Modern roundabouts are not safe for pedestrians and bicycles. Uh, I think they would have a high likelihood of getting hit or trying to intermingle with traffic would not be good. Well, the big advantage that roundabouts offer to pedestrians and bicyclists is low vehicle speeds. Uh, all the vehicle speeds are 25 miles per hour or less at the roundabouts and at the crossings. And the other big advantage is that all the sight lines at the crosswalks are much better because all the crossings are at 90 degrees. It makes it much easier for drivers and pedestrians to see each other and to react. I went to a location within Cottage Grove that has a multi-lane roundabout and there's a signalized intersection next to it. When I was at the signalized intersection with a group of people waiting to cross, I happened to look at some drivers who were near me and what they were doing is they were looking at that light. They weren't looking at anything else. They were looking at the light for their chance to go. They weren't really paying attention to pedestrians. They were looking for the light to tell them where to go and when they can go. When you were at the roundabout, one nice thing that I noticed is as the drivers were coming up, they were looking at you. As they enter the roundabout, they have this wide view as they come up to it and they can see pedestrians. I can tell you from experience that the intersection in which we're taking the signal out and adding a roundabout has been very difficult for me to cross with my children. So I'm looking forward to having a roundabout where I know that the speeds will be reduced and people will be more aware as they're traveling past. Modern roundabouts provide several options for cyclists. Novice cyclists can utilize the trails and crosswalks and enjoy the same benefits as pedestrians. Experienced cyclists can ride with traffic inside the roundabout, following the same rules as motorists. Myth number four, modern roundabouts cause more crashes. I think at first they probably cause more just because people don't know a lot about them. People are so used to traffic lights and stuff. 
A study by the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety examined 24 modern roundabouts that were converted from stoplights to roundabouts and found a 70% reduction in injury-related crashes and an 89% decrease in fatal crashes. This reduction in crashes is due to the three main safety features of roundabouts – low speeds, gentle crossing angles, and separated traffic flows. At typical intersections, you've got traffic that are crossing each other. And when you've got that type of crossing, you've got a, a crossing conflict. So that if a person blows uh, the stop sign or they go through the red light and a person other hits it, it's uh, that type of crash that you'll have. It's a T-bone crash. Whereas at a roundabout, people are going in generally the same direction because the circulatory roadway is going this way. The entering traffic has to go that same direction. So if you do hit, it's going to be a glancing blow as opposed to that T-bone crash that you'll have at a typical intersection. You know, as a state trooper, we go to crashes every single day, and crashes are caused by driver decisions in almost all situations. When you have a traffic safety device like a roundabout, you're taking away some of those errors that drivers can make. So although we still may see crashes at them, we're gonna see less crashes involving fatal or serious injuries. And those are the crashes that, as state troopers, we go to, and it's devastating to families to have to go through that, if, especially when they know it could have been prevented. Myth number five, modern roundabouts are confusing for younger and elderly drivers. Um, I think that roundabouts are definitely difficult for elderly drivers because they're unfamiliar with them. They have maybe never seen them before. What I try to tell people at public meetings when they say that roundabouts are not safe when you have a significant amount of elderly traffic is they're actually a much greater benefit than a typical intersection. Typically, you're driving at a lower speed, you have more time to decide what you're going to do, react, and then actually act. And because traffic is going at a much lower speed, it's a much safer situation anyway. In addition, there's only one direction of traffic that you need to watch. For younger drivers, modern roundabout education is typically incorporated into driver's education classes and has been a detailed part of the Minnesota Driver's Manual for many years. Within Woodbury, there is a high school that has six roundabouts located around that high school and there have been no reported problems. It doesn't take long to get comfortable going through roundabouts and if you make a mistake once you're in that roundabout, chances are unlikely that you're going to have an accident. If you do, it's certainly not going to be severe like it would if you made a mistake going through a traditional intersection. Myth number six, you can get trapped in the inside lane of a roundabout. She says the road's too busy and she just gets stuck in the inside lane the whole time. There's a perception at a multi-lane roundabout and I think it's because people saw the movie European Vacation where people were, were driving within a traffic circle. It wasn't a roundabout though, so European Vacation should not be under consideration for people who are concerned about roundabouts. With the multi-lane roundabout, we let people know ahead of time what lane they need to be in in order to get to the appropriate location after the fact. There are signs as you're approaching the roundabout which tell you what lane you ought to be in in order to navigate through it. Multi-lane roundabout operates very much like a multi-lane traffic signal and people that intend to turn left at the intersection need to keep to the left and drivers that intend to turn right need to keep to the right and there will always be lane use signs and pavement markings to guide drivers to which lane can be used for their intended movement. Myth number seven, modern roundabouts are built too small for trucks and buses. Uh, I don't even know if a semi-truck could make it around that corner unless it's like an exit to a highway maybe but. The curb around the center of the modern roundabout is actually a truck apron. It is designed specifically to allow buses, large trucks, and trucks with trailers to maneuver through the roundabout by allowing the truck's rear wheels to roll onto the truck apron when necessary. The truck apron is not to be used by regular passenger vehicles, it is not a sidewalk, and pedestrians are not allowed in the center island. Well, as is the case at any other intersection, drivers should give trucks plenty of room, uh, especially when trucks are turning, because they might need to swing wide or straddle over multiple lanes. So uh, if you are behind a truck as you approach a roundabout, do not enter next to the truck. Give them plenty of space to make their movement. Myth number eight. Roundabouts make it difficult for vehicles at nearby intersections and driveways to turn onto the road. 
My dad hates roundabouts. They are building one by his house and he says he'll never be able to turn out onto the main road now. When I've conducted public meetings regarding roundabouts, one of the things that I've heard from people who've had concerns is that they may have an entry onto a roadway and they're counting on a signal prior to that location in order to stop traffic so that they have an opportunity to get onto that road. And they were asking, well, if you're not going to stop all traffic, I'm not going to have any gaps so that I can get out of my driveway onto the road. But the characteristic of roundabouts is kind of interesting is that you may not have the long length of gap, but you're going to have more frequent gaps than what you will get at a signalized intersection. Gaps are created at stoplights by regulating traffic with green and red lights. With stoplights, the gaps can be less frequent but longer in duration. Gaps at roundabouts are created whenever cross traffic passes through the roundabout. With roundabouts, the gaps can be more frequent but shorter in duration. Uh, the gaps that are created by roundabouts are very similar to the ones created by stoplights because at stoplights, even if the stoplight is operating on a fixed cycle, you often have drivers that are making right turns on red or other movements and so there's always going to be a stream of traffic coming from both intersections and so one is not really any safer than the other. They just tend to be patterned a little bit differently. Myth number nine. Modern roundabouts have a negative impact on local businesses. I think it's great for business if you have a roundabout nearby. We've constructed them in the area of businesses, much for the same reasons that a residential driveway is convenient to have near a roundabout. You have that U-turn ability. Um, if you are just downstream from a roundabout and somebody wants to make a left, you just need to make a U-turn in the roundabout, which then makes it safer to enter and exit the business because you're not crossing two different directions of traffic. In commercial areas where modern roundabouts have replaced stoplights, business owners can actually see an increase in business. In fact, a study of a corridor in Golden, Colorado, before and after conversion from stoplight control to roundabouts, not only saw traffic calming and safety benefits, but the business community showed continued growth, while other similar neighboring areas declined. One of the other big advantages of roundabouts is the opportunities that they create for landscaping and other aesthetic treatments to help uh, create a positive image of the area. Myth number 10. Modern roundabouts cost more than stoplights. I'm pretty sure a roundabout would cost more money to build than a stoplight because I think they take up a lot more space. Well, a roundabout does tend to be a larger type of intersection than a stoplight, but unlike a stoplight, roundabouts don't need large sets of turn lanes coming up to the intersection. Overall, roundabouts often take up less space than a comparable stoplight because those turn lanes aren't needed extending away from the intersection. While actual costs will vary from project to project, upfront costs to construct modern roundabouts and stoplights are often similar when considering all costs with the traffic signal, you have monthly electric bills, you have street lights on your traffic signals which contribute to your electric, you have ongoing maintenance of your wiring, of your traffic detection, and you have to send personnel out to that traffic signal at least once a year to do preventive maintenance and to keep an eye on things. Whereas a roundabout, you have the intersection lighting and you have your initial construction cost and then when you take into account the cost to the motoring public and the lack of delays compared to what you would have at a traffic signal, the roundabout probably is your more cost-effective option. The modern roundabout myths that were covered in this video are generally related to the perceived operations and safety of roundabouts. After seeing the information in this video, we encourage you to do your own research on roundabouts. MnDOT and other local highway agencies have abundant online resources on the topic covered in this video, as well as other roundabout topics. Let's work together to dispel the myths surrounding roundabouts and make Minnesota roads safer, more efficient, and more economical.